Hi, I'm Professor Pormans. I'm Chief Scientific Advisor at the Department of Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the end of our second series of our Good Development uh, podcasts. We've been very busy talking to Bayes funded researchers from around the world, extracting their wisdoms on life and work. And we're going to reflect over the next half hour on, on what we've learned. And I'm joined today by Susie Kitchen. Susie. Thank you, Paul. Uh, yes, so I'm Susie Kitchens. I'm a Deputy Director in Bayes working on global research and innovation collaborations. Um, I'm a diplomat by training uh, and have now been with Bayes for about a year and a half. Um, it's a good time for us to be talking about our lessons earned because Bayes is going through a lot of change and shift at the moment around how we fund R&D programmes, particularly our ODA programmes. Um, so good time to reflect. And Paul, you've done a, a whole series of conversations with researchers under the Good Development theme, uh, but we're going to turn the focus on you today and your lessons earned. Uh, and we hope that will help us to better understand the value and impact of our work as you reflect uh, on the campaign conversations and the process of putting together your lessons earned. So perhaps first you can give us a few reflections from the conversations that you've already had and then talk us through a bit about the process that you went through in coming up with your own lessons earned. No, I mean, actually the, the whole lessons earned process has been really quite, quite you know, revealing. I think the chance to talk to international researchers and see the power of international research and collaboration and what it can deliver. You know, it can seem trite to say those sorts of words, you know, but actually we, we learn a lot in science when we work together, uh, that we, we take diverse viewpoints and we bring those together. And in a way, there's no greater vehicle for that than the international collaborations um, as well. I think one of the interesting aspects of, 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 of the conversations, which as you, as you point out, have been ODA funded, for those of you not into the lingo, that's Overseas Development Aid, which looks at the way that science and research can support development uh, and outcomes in country, how science and engineering can do that. And the conversations over both series have shown the power to develop and, and find lead compounds for drugs, how to reduce flooding in, in countries that are, are, are plagued by flooding, how to work with indigenous people and understand societies so that you can actually work and develop uh, uh, areas of that country uh, alongside the people who live and work there. And I think that's for me shown the power of international R&D and really what it brings uh, and, and, and why, why we fund it. I guess the Thank second you. part of the question, which I've not answered, the second part of the question is, is what had I learned from doing this? I, I found it an incredibly um, challenging process, actually, if I'm honest, you know, to think about my own scientific experience and reflect on that. So I actually found it very valuable, if I'm honest. I found it valuable to be able to reflect on on some of the things that I I believe as a scientist and I've learned as a scientist. And and, I, and looking what other people have learned as well has been incredibly educational, uh, I think. And there's, we don't often think about the things that we do and, and, and who we are as scientists. Uh, and, and I think that process of thinking about our lessons earned has, has allowed that reflection. Yes, I agree with that. And um, I was actually the first person to, to do a poster for this campaign. Uh, so a bit of a guinea pig there. And I, I wonder if perhaps I, I overshared a bit, which is a bit of a personality trait for me. <laughs> Um, I was quite honest about um, about things that I've learned where things have gone a bit wrong and perhaps sort of um, exposing my, my shoddy personal admin around lost passports and things um, wasn't putting me in the best light, but it is a reflective process um, and it is very much about us as human beings as well. Um, and I wanted to pick up, Paul, on your first lesson uh, where you also emphasise the people approach. Um, you talk about science is done by people for people so perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about that lesson yeah no that, thanks very much I, I think that in a way i don't think you can overshare susie i don't think you can overshare i think you can only be honest uh, uh, about uh, about what it what it is and i, and I think you know I, i've learned you know i've i've as a, as a practicing academic trained numerous phd students probably taught thousands of students uh and uh, I think that you realise that actually, often you think about science is like is about the output or the outcome, but actually that output and outcome can influence people. It's people that do science. I think in my job as base chief scientist and, and, and thinking about 
you know, something like the delivery of net zero, I've absolutely realized in that context, it's not just about having a technocratic view on that. It's about having a view that takes people and behavior change or green choices, whatever you want to call it, into account. And this ODA series has absolutely shown that to me, that it's about people, sometimes people who are inspirational leaders, sometimes people uh, who are there on, on, on the ground doing the science, people that understand people, you know, and uh, talked about the example with the indigenous people, you know, and working with indigenous people uh, in the rainforests. So I, I think that throughout that, there's a strong streak of science is about people working for people. And if you take this sort of semi-detached technocratic view of it, you will probably end up with, with, with science that is, is not as good as it could be. Yes, and one of the um, really exciting objectives of our ODA funded work has been about that building up capability and capacity in countries where the science sector will be world leading in mm -hmm. the future. It's not there yet, but we've got the opportunity now to shape it and help build that capability, both to make sure that there are better science solutions in future, but also to make sure that we are natural partners in future. So there's a a geopolitical the strategic. partnership thing is key the partnership thing comes through these sort of conversations we're not doing science to people you know uh, um, and uh, you know partnership is 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 a word that we, we use an awful lot but actually not a word we think about now what I've seen through these conversations is genuine partnerships partnerships of equals you know yeah. because because that's really the importance uh, of this but you talked also about about people uh, in yours what was it think the best of people i think you said or what what was behind that yeah, yeah well um i mean i just think generally a positive outlook on life gets you further and um i mean i've worked with uh you know a really dedicated team in Bayes. Um, we've been through a lot of churn and change and particularly for those who's working on ODA with the change in from 0.7 to 0.5 had a huge impact on the programmes and how we could deliver that then had ramifications for our colleagues and, and staff at post. Um, and yet everyone has done that with absolutely the best intentions and if we focus on the bigger goal and recognize that what we all want to get to is bigger, better science, mm -hmm. uh, then taking the people with us on that and doing it in the kindest uh, and most respectful way possible um, has given us the best chance of success. Um, so I think that, you know, it, it's all part of that people at the heart of science um, idea. Change is not a bad thing though. Change is not a bad thing. And I, I think if you, you've done science for long enough, you, your ideas evolve, change is part of that. I think yeah. the, 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 you know, change can seem tiresome sometimes, but actually really, if your ideas don't evolve and the situation doesn't, doesn't change, it's probably not getting better. So there is something about yeah. change which is inherently not bad, uh, but can actually be quite mentally and physically tiring. Yes, well yes, using it as a trigger for improvement rather than seeing it as a threat. Yeah. Um, I mean, something sort of similar to that is you talk quite a lot about the importance of sharing research. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's a people endeavour and it's better when more people are involved. So perhaps tell us a bit about how your work as a chief scientific advisor enables you to support that idea. Sharing is incredibly important. There's, there's no point in a scientific endeavour if you don't tell people what you're doing. There's a filter there, clearly. There's a filter there around making sure that you're talking about that. And when I joined the department uh, in Bayes and took on the role, I felt it was very important there was an aspect of the department that looked outward and said, you know, this is what the science is doing. What I will always say about that, you know, when I got to Bayes, it's incredibly gifted people here doing really good work. Um, and it was important to talk about some of our thinking and some of our science, science and engineering that underpins that. It gives confidence to the community that we are um, and using scientific and engineering evidence as part of our thinking. But it also allows us to receive ideas from the community that allow us to evolve uh, uh, our evidence base that underpins the development and delivery of policy, which is such an important part of the of the Bayes mission in many mm. respects. Um, and I'll just um, push you a bit more on, on sharing because I know it's an area of policy that you're very engaged in. Uh, sometimes we can't always share and sometimes we do need to protect. So perhaps just say a few words about that sort of open versus... Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I do, I mean, I'm, I'm very much supportive of the trusted research agenda, which, which Bayes is promoting to help support scientists think about 
uh, uh, sharing. As open as possible uh, um, is, is, is a really important uh, paradigm in this. But I think we've got to recognize globally science is a, is a, a vehicle for good, but also people can use it for nefarious means as well. And I think it's just being and thinking about what I would call the basic hygiene factors uh, around that, which we call the trusted research uh, agenda, are an important part uh, of that. And getting organizations, universities, etc., cetera, to, to think about uh, uh, the way that they collaborate, who they collaborate with, and putting in the, the correct balances, checks and balances in there without becoming uh, uh, overly bureaucratic. Is, is an important element of, of evolving the way that we do international research. Mm. It's also a good example of where we see how government and academia come together and that can create tension sometimes. And in our international work, particularly through the ODA funding, we're dealing with very different science systems and very different kinds of government. So any further reflections on that? Yeah, I, I think so. Now, I mean, I think there's one danger, and I, a danger, and I, I take this from my own experience. We're talking about lessons learned. What you do is you tend to collaborate and talk to people uh, who think like you. Uh, so what you do is you think everybody thinks like you. Uh, so there's a danger of complacency around that sort of thinking. So I think there's a reflection that you know, you know, I, I'm not saying go out there and think the worst of people, but but do challenge the way that you think about. Uh, collaboration and, and and what you're doing and what's part of that because it's not always it's not always for the best intentions that, that people want to particularly on on, on technology AI uh, some of the data sciences uh, around that and I'm not saying put the blockers up I'm just saying think about it just use those basic factors and, and, and stop and think about uh, the way that you want to uh, develop those sort of partnerships and research. I mean, you work a lot on the trusted research agenda. What's, what's your re reflections on, on somebody who has to put that into practice internationally? Yeah, so um, I mean, it has been difficult at times where um, the academic sector have felt a bit like this is government being a bit heavy handed and policing their work. Mm -hmm. And on one hand, we're saying, please go out and do international collaborations because we know that's how it's going. we're going to drive productivity. We're going to create jobs, attract in investment uh, and deliver better science but on the other hand do it carefully put in mitigations make sure that you're governing things and those two things don't always sit very comfortably together um, but generally uh, I think everyone is on board with um, the fact that when you're doing cutting-edge science sometimes it can go in the wrong direction and it is absolutely within our UK values to ensure we do everything to prevent to prevent that from happening and if we're confident in our measures to do that then we can feel more confident in broader international collaborations. No, absolutely. Um, I agree. I agree totally, yeah. I think we're sort of getting onto some of the, the tougher territory here so I'm going to bring you back to your lessons and ask you which one was the hardest one because you talk about not being afraid to fail and I wonder if there's something you want to no, share. No, fa failure is good. Uh, um, uh, this is how we learn. I think it, it. I think it's quite interesting. You know, it's uh, the most important phrase in science is "I don't know," you know, uh, um, but I can find out. Um, and and I think that you know, being afraid, to, you shouldn't be afraid to fail. I mean, the danger is career progression, uh, uh, moving forward is often often seen uh, in the sense of of succeeding, of getting outputs of winning. Now, we all know in, in the science world about publication bias. If you only publish the successes and you don't publish the failures, you you, you have this kind of bias towards uh, uh, things. And you learn an awful lot by failing. You, uh, and, and I think there's a real challenge about how to communicate failure uh, in some senses. And it, 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 as you said earlier, it's, about, it's not a negative necessarily. It's about being more positive in the way that um, in the way that you fail. But it's an important lesson I've learned personally that your know, failure is not a bad thing. You, if you learn from that failure and you communicate what you learned from that failure so other people don't make the same mistake, if you will, don't spend the same science money trying to chase down the same problem, I think the, the, that is there. So in a way, embrace failure. It's your friend. You know, uh, Learn from it and communicate about it. It seemed to me to be a, a, a replacement uh, for the success only positive bias culture, which I think would, is actually, I'll go as far as saying dangerous in some senses. 
Mm, mm. Yes, and that um, positive framing around failure is so important for us in government because well, we're using taxpayers' money, so we have an enormous responsibility there to demonstrate value for money and effective mm -hmm. management of public money. And of course, we're answerable to ministers who in turn then need to speak to their constituents. So they have got a huge premium on being able to demonstrate success. So how do we how do we shift that that uh, narrative from one of failure to one of learning and building? Well, I think you put it good there at, at the end of that conversation. That in, in a way, you know, failure is a slightly loaded term, isn't it? Which is in slightly, in some sense, is why I used it in the in, in, in the poster. But it is it's just a lesson learned, isn't it? It's a lesson learned. And it's not a bad thing. It's not negative. And you've got to frame that in that positive uh, view. And I, and I think that communicating it is, is the important bit, that it becomes part of the normal sort of dialogue. I mean, I look at thousands of business cases where it feels like thousands, you know, and, and actually one of the things they ask in all the business cases are what have you learned in the way that you've tried to do this previously? And that self-reflection of what you've learned is actually quite important. But if I turn mm. to you slightly, if I turn to you slightly, I, I, I which one of your uh, lessons was the hardest one? I, I saw that replaced, but with Anne, that diplomacy bit, I, I'm going to have to take this one. I, I think it's a really good one, actually. But Susie, could you explain that a little bit for you. Um, well, yes, I mean, I think that is probably um, my rather less articulate way of describing the same sense that you've been describing. Um, so for me, that came from a sort of a policy uh, experience of trying to um, well, it's part of talking truth to power, really, and trying to um, shift a narrative where a ministerial steer wasn't being backed up by the evidence. It wasn't in the science field, this I'm going back some time now. Um, but it was very difficult to demonstrate the evidence uh, when the, 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 the argument hadn't landed. So it was just shifting that argument so it felt like something constructive and building uh, rather than something pivoting away and doing differently. Uh, mm -hmm. So removing but and replacing it with and just felt that sort of more continual narrative towards success rather than a focus on the failure. And um, I'm going to go a bit Desert Island Discs on you now, Paul. Oh, uh, if yeah. you had to pick one of your lessons earned, mm. which one would you whisper in the ear of your freshly graduated self? Probably, probably the believe one, you know, probably the believe, you know, you you can in that believe in, in what you do. And, and I think that, you know, it, is believe saying be overconfident. I, I think it's interesting, you know, uh, again, being a, having been a PhD supervisor for many years, once a PhD student uh, once said to me, that the important job of a supervisor is to take all the uncertainty that a PhD student feels about a result and, and give it that sort of, uh, you know, uh, give it that sort of certainty to move forward. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think, so it's not about believing and being overconfident, but it's, you know, believe brings together some of my other lessons about sharing, failing, you know, and the scientific method, you know, in, in a way, bring that in, 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 I'm going to be, I'm going to have to say, be a positive, in a positive, uh, in a positive sense, because I think overconfidence is, it, is a, it can be a problem in a scientist because then actually you close yourself down to other possibilities. And, you know, yeah. we, we talk yeah. about, we talk a lot about skepticism, you know, and it's kind of skepticism has been um, kind of hijacked by climate skeptics as they're so, so called. Skepticism is not a bad thing. Skepticism is part of asking and questioning uh, everything that you do. So I, I think if you can have that constructive skepticism alongside that believing and not being afraid to fail, uh, then I, I think that's probably that's probably one of the ones I think that would would pull through. So a, a reflection. Go on. I say you're slightly bending the rules there because I think you've smudged some of yours together. <laughs> and yeah, I have, I think, yes. And, yes. Um, but I think um, I would definitely you know pick up on your point about the scientific method there. Yeah. Um, you know, we are we're operating uh, in extraordinary political times at the moment where yeah. um, policy is being made without necessarily having the evidence there available to underpin it because we are in unprecedented times mm -hmm. and that is uh, that, that introduces a lot of uncertainty so we where we coming from a science background can inject that evidence basis the, through the scientific method in order to underpin judgments yeah. uh, we can provide a little bit of you know clarity cutting through some of that uncertainty maybe um so i would like to steal that one from you um 
having you know having spoken to a number of people who've done these lessons earned are there any that you would like to nick from somebody else oh i, I don't know I, I think that i mean there's been such an incredible richness um um uh, through it you know, I mean, there's been some absolutely great ones, you know, from Kenneth uh, Guantai, um, uh, who's a Kenyan based auto truck one, you know, innovation is not for the faint hearted. I kind of love that, you know, you must be highly passionate about what you want to do and fight for it. I mean, that you know, that's a wonderful sort of, uh, uh, you know, you know, wonderful sort of kind of clarion call uh, to the absolutely. sort of things that you from can do. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've been on one of Ken's uh, electric tuk-tuks uh, mm. and he I mean, he actually forged it with his own hands, as well as having the idea of innovation, yeah. introducing the technology and taking it to market. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, one of the ones I enjoyed was, uh, with, was with Mauricio Diagranas Cadelo, who works at Q on the nature-based solutions, talking about some of the Q work. And, and that, uh, that you know that adapt to uncertain scenarios that you know there's a, there's a long there's a been a strong with the lessons earned there's been a really strong message of course because much of this research was done over the covid period and yeah. that and that constantly needing to adapt i think to the changing circumstances i guess it comes back to some of the things we've been talking about about believing about change and, and uh, that we talked about change right at the beginning that adaptation i think is, has been a really strong sort of uh, lessons from the sort of things that we talked about uh, today. So I think that's been another key message that's come through this. And I would say to people, uh, I, I would say to people, absolutely go read these posters because they're, they're, they're brilliant and you, you get that diversity uh, across the piece. Sok Ching Chong from, um, um, from Malaysia, um, smart work starts with hard work. I, don't, I, don't, I think every scientist will, will, will recognize that in the sense of, you know, there are there are things in there uh, uh, where, you know, a lot of science comes from the hard yards, you know, a around that, uh, around that. Uh, you are tougher than you know you are and things are never as bad as they can seem. That's, you, know, um, you know, which again is about successful people not having doubts, fears and worries. Do not let these hold you, hold, hold you back. I mean, that's that failure question again, I think. So you can actually probably through the posters see some very strong themes. I'm, I'm sure a sociologist could have a lot of fun actually with the, uh, with, the, with, the outcome, uh, with the outcomes of this. Well, Susie, it's been great to speak to you this morning uh, and, and hear uh, about the, the future of ODA funding, which looks look strong and um, will evolve. I think as you reflected, we've learned a lot from doing this lesson learned process about, about international research. And there are some very strong themes around innovation, working together, not being afraid to, to fail, that really come out as part of this. I think as we move forward, uh, you know, there's gonna be strong opportunities in this sort of area. And I look forward to, to working with you and your teams as you evolve this sort of funding and talking about the great research uh, and science that comes out of this. So I have to thank all our contributors uh, to this series of Lessons Earned. It's been absolutely wonderful to, to hear from around the world, around what's going on. And to finish off by talking to, to Susie, who is really shaping very much the programme for the future and the good things that will come forward. Thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm.